commanders of U.S. forces in the Americas told the Senate they needed more funding to counter threats from Iran, North Korea and Russia, which they admitted were hypothetical, while praising the humane conduct of U.S. troops at Thankless Guantanamo. Admiral Kurt W. Tide, head of U.S. Southern Command, Southcom, Admiral William E. Gortney, head of U.S. Northern Command, Northcom, and Admiral Cecil E. D. Haney, head of U.S. Strategic Command, Stratsom, testified on Thursday before the Senate Armed Services Committee, continuing the series of hearings related to the budget demands and strategic plans of the U.S. Armed Forces in 2017. Northcom's area of responsibility covers the U.S., Canada, Mexico and the Arctic, and includes the North American Aerospace Defense Command. NORAD. Southcom covers Latin America south of Mexico, including the Joint Task Force Guantanamo, JTF GTMO, detention facility in Cuba. Previously known as the Strategic Air Command, Stratsom is in charge of nuclear weapons, missile defense, space operations, and information warfare. We continue to conduct safe, humane, legal, and transparent care and custody of the remaining detainees at Guantanamo Bay, Tide told the lawmakers. Detention operations are a demanding, sensitive, and often thankless mission. The medical and guard force deal with enormous stress and are subject to near constant verbal and physical assaults by 11 detainees. The men and women at JTF GTMO conduct the most humane, principled detention operations anywhere in the world often exceeding the requirements of U.S. laws and the Geneva Convention, he added. The U.S. remains on track to deploy 14 additional interceptor missiles to the array in Alaska, Northcom's Gortney testified, bringing the system up to full strength of 44 missiles by the end of 2017. He noted, however, that the current ballistic defense system has an unsustainable cost model, which has us postured to shoot down inexpensive rockets with very expensive ones. The Missile Defense Agency is working on new technology that would use non-kinetic methods to defeat ballistic missiles threats when we receive indications that a launch is imminent, the Admiral said. He gave no other details about the program other than that it would be more cost-effective than the current approach. On the other hand, Gortney defended the controversial Aerostat program known as the JLENS, a massive airship moored in Maryland that was supposed to scan for low-level targets over the National Capital Region, NCR. The blimp broke loose last October, wreaking havoc across Maryland and Pennsylvania as it dragged its mirroring cable along the ground. The fiasco was later blamed on negligence to replace batteries in an important system component. Although this was a setback to our operational exercise, we still believe the JLENS system shows great promise in defense of the NCR, Gortney argued. Gortney was more nuanced in his assessment. The Northcom had reminded the panel of the incident on July 4 last year, when two sets of Russian T-95 Bear long-range bombers were spotted off the coasts of California and Alaska. Although none of the four bombers entered U.S. or Canadian sovereign airspace and were not a direct threat to our national security, they do represent a strategic demonstration of Russian military capability, Gortney said. Russia's strategic nuclear forces remain the only foreign military threat that could imperil our nation's existence, the Northcom chief warned.